Could the rise of BRICS countries really mean trouble for the Western world and the end of the United Nations? Today, we're going to explore how these changes are shaking up the UN and what it means for everyone. How are countries like BRICS changing the way we think about working together globally? By the end of this video, you'll see how these shifts could change global diplomacy and what's next for the UN. Welcome to the channel. How countries in the UN could cause problems. The United Nations is facing some serious challenges from its own members. Take Indonesia, for example. Their withdrawal in 1965 set a precedent when they were unhappy about Malaysia's spot on the UN Security Council. Even though the UN never officially recognized Indonesia's exit, it opened the door for other nations to think twice about their membership. Fast forward to 2016, when Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte stirred the pot by threatening to leave the UN after it criticized his controversial war on drugs, which led to the thousands of killings of illegal drug suspects. He accused the UN of meddling in his country's affairs, but ultimately decided to stick around. On the other side of the globe, in the US, there's been a rise in isolationist thoughts. The American Sovereignty Restoration Act was introduced in 2017, aiming to pull the US out of the UN. While it gained some traction, it ultimately flopped due to worries about the fallout on international relations. BRICS and the Global South want changes. As frustrations mount, BRICS nations and others from the Global South are calling for some serious changes. They argue that the UN is too heavily influenced by Western powers, especially in the Security Council, where five permanent members, the US, UK, France, Russia, and China, hold all the veto cards. Many believe this setup is outdated and doesn't reflect today's global landscape. The BRICS group represents over 40% of the world's population and nearly 25% of global GDP, yet they feel the current structure doesn't represent the realities of a multipolar world. Plus, there are 54 African countries, making up about 28% of UN membership, that don't have permanent seats on the Security Council. The push for an expanded Security Council to include nations like India and Brazil is gaining momentum as these countries seek a fairer system. Western countries running the show in global groups. The influence of Western nations doesn't stop at the UN. It stretches into major financial institutions like the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank. Critics point out that over 60% of voting power in these organizations is held by Western countries, leaving emerging economies feeling sidelined. This is a big deal for BRICS nations, which account for nearly 25% of global GDP, but only have about 15% of the voting power at the IMF. China, for instance, has an economy that's worth around $18 trillion, yet it holds less than 7% of the voting rights within the IMF. This mismatch has sparked ongoing calls for a re-evaluation of voting structures, but real change has been slow and mostly symbolic. Emerging markets are feeling the heat frustrated by their lack of influence in crucial financial decisions. The ongoing failure to reform these institutions has only added fuel to the fire, leading to calls for alternative systems. Double standards on human rights. The BRICS nations often call out global organizations like the UN for showing favoritism toward Western countries. This idea of double standards really pops up when we talk about human rights. Take Russia and China, for example. Both face a lot of international criticism for their domestic policies, like Russia's treatment of LGBTQ plus folks and China's actions in Tibet and Xinjiang, where there are serious reports of human rights abuses. But BRICS leaders argue that similar issues in Western countries don't get nearly as much attention. For instance, while Russia is often slammed for its human rights record, problems like racial profiling and the treatment of indigenous people in the US and Canada don't receive the same level of outrage from the global community. The Israel-Palestine conflict is another great example of this inconsistency. After Hamas attacked Israeli civilians, the world quickly condemned those actions. However, the reaction to Israel's retaliatory measures, like using white phosphorus and blocking essential supplies in Gaza, has been much quieter. Organizations such as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch have labeled these actions as potential war crimes, yet the global response has been noticeably less intense. Countries competing and clashing. The grip of Western nations on global institutions, which was solidified after World War II, is facing serious challenges from emerging powers. 
the geopolitical scene has changed a lot, with China now being recognized as the world's second largest economy and India quickly climbing the ranks. This shift has led to rising tensions between BRICS countries and the West. Russia, feeling increasingly isolated due to Western sanctions after its invasion of Ukraine, has strengthened its ties within the BRICS group. These sanctions have hit the Russian economy hard, shrinking it by about 2.3% in 2022. However, they've also pushed Russia to collaborate more closely with other BRICS nations. Meanwhile, China's clashing with Western countries over its policies in Hong Kong, Xinjiang, and the South China Sea, where military tensions are on the rise. These geopolitical rivalries are fueling BRICS's demand for changes in global governance structures that they see as unfairly stacked against them. The sanctions on Russian businesses and individuals haven't just hurt Russia. They've also sent shockwaves through global energy markets, hitting developing countries that rely on Russian resources the hardest. Climate change and economic gaps. Let's talk climate policy. Countries in the BRICS group are saying that Western climate rules are putting too much pressure on developing nations. Many of these countries are still trying to industrialize, but they're being asked to meet tough emission goals without enough financial or tech help. Take India, for example. They've made it clear that moving to green energy can't come at the expense of economic growth. After all, coal is a big deal there, providing about 70% of their electricity. Plus, trade policies make things even trickier. Western countries, especially in the EU and the US, give out agricultural subsidies that many believe mess up global markets and hurt farmers in developing countries. BRICS nations, which rely heavily on agriculture, argue that these subsidies create unfair competition and widen the gap between rich and poor countries. It's a real issue. For instance, in 2021, the EU's Common Agricultural Policy handed out around 58 billion euros in subsidies, mostly helping Western farmers while leaving developing nations in the dust. Ideas for changing how the world is run. With all these challenges, people are coming up with ideas to shake things up in global governance. One big suggestion is to expand the UN Security Council to give permanent seats to countries like India and Brazil. This would help address the feelings of being left out that many emerging economies have. Another idea is to boost regional organizations like the African Union or the Organization of American States. These groups could handle local issues better, plus with BRICS plus now including countries like Saudi Arabia, Argentina, and Egypt, it's clear that this bloc is gaining traction and could change the global governance game. As BRICS nations push for a fairer global order, their efforts might really shift the balance in international relations, bringing in new members to BRICS, plus not only boosts their economic power, but also shows a united front against Western dominance in global affairs. Issues within BRICS. Even though BRICS countries are strong together, they still have some internal challenges. Political differences and different economic goals can sometimes make it hard for them to work effectively as a group. For example, while everyone wants to change global governance, each country has its own way of doing things. Take China, for instance. Its fast economic growth and bold foreign policy often bump heads with other BRICS members, especially India, which has territorial disputes with China. Brazil and South Africa also deal with their own issues at home that can limit how much they can engage in BRICS projects. These internal challenges could affect how well BRICS handles global politics and pushes for a fairer world. How well the group can tackle these problems will be super important for its influence on future international relations. The ongoing talks about working together on economic projects among BRICS nations will really test their unity and determination when facing outside pressures. What this means for the UN's future. As BRICS countries keep pushing for change and challenging the usual way of doing things, the impact on the United Nations and the global order is significant. If the Western-led order starts to fade, we might see a big shift in how global governance is set up. The rise of BRICS as a counterbalance to Western power shows a move toward a world where more countries have a say and can reshape international rules. How BRICS interacts with other global players will be key in shaping the future of international relations. With the UN facing more criticism and calls for reform, the future of global governance could very well depend on what BRICS decides to do in the coming years. What do you think about the future of the UN with all these changes from BRICS? Do you see it as a good thing or a bad thing? Share your thoughts in the comments. And that's it for today. 
hit the like button and subscribe. Stay tuned for more and catch you at the next one.